Democrats reportedly in panic mode, privately worrying Trump could shatter the blue wall after the Teamsters non-endorsement of Kamala Harris. Politico reporting, quote, the Teamsters withholding an endorsement from Harris this week after internal po polling showed most respondents backing Trump is sparking fresh concerns that the GOP nominee could have higher than expected support among union members, especially men. Here with Reaction, Fox News contributor Mark Thiessen. Mark, great to see you this morning. Um, Good morning. I think that Trump's win, well, Trump's win in the union, that's obvious even if it doesn't accompany an endorsement yeah. from the Teamsters. The question I think for everyone now is, does, is that indicative of a wider movement in areas where unions are strong, like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, that are key to winning the presidency? I think it very much is. Look, Donald Trump has made the Republican Party the party of the working class, uh, and the union leadership just hasn't caught up. I mean, he won the poll of Teamsters uh, members 60-30. You would think that that would mean he gets their endorsement, too. But they, they, they didn't endorse him, even, uh, even despite that. They should have given him his endor their endorsement. If they, were, if they were Democratic, the UAW admits, their, their leadership admits that Donald Trump has the support of most of their members, but they endorse Kamala Harris. So I think these unions have not caught up with the American people, uh, because the Republican Party, under Donald Trump, is now the party of the working class. And I think those people are going to come out for, the, for him uh, in November. Yeah, that's, I mean, everything is about Pennsylvania. Does this tell us something that might happen yeah. in Pennsylvania that's not yet showing up in the polls? And, or at least not fully showing up in the polls. Uh, meanwhile, who's running, yep. the, who's running America as we speak? Uh, Joe Biden held his first <laughs> cabinet meeting in a year, Mark. That's stunning. Um, and there was a prominent <laughs> role. There was a prominent role for the first lady. Watch. Today at the top of our meeting, Jill's going to uh, give an update on the House initiative, White House initiative to fundamentally change the approach and fund and how we approach and fund women's health services. So I'd like to turn it over to Jill and uh, for any comments she has. And it's all yours, kid. Thank you. You know, sometimes the White House surprises you. When Joe became president, I knew I wanted to keep shining a light on the issues that I'd worked on for so many years. Pretty unusual, Mark, especially when people are wondering how <laughs> on the job is Biden. Yeah, I mean, they're not even pretending it anymore. We're in full Edith Wilson territory right now. Look, the First Lady doesn't have a job. She's not an official. She's not an elected official. She's not a member of the White House senior staff. Though I remember uh, when Hillary Clinton was uh, First Lady, she actually had a West Wing office. In fact, I know that because it was later my office. I was the only person in the West Wing who had a full-length mirror in his office uh, because of Hillary Clinton. But even then, she didn't take a seat at the cabinet table until she became Secretary of State under Obama. Uh, you know, so this is this is quite unprecedented. And a lot of people on the left are saying, well, Ivanka Trump uh, addressed a cabinet meeting once. Well, it's different. Ivanka Trump was a member of the White House senior staff. And in a cabinet meeting, the senior staff doesn't sit at the table. They sit at the chairs around the table, around the back. And sometimes they're called on to speak. And so, and they stand, and she addressed it. She didn't sit at the table. She addressed them standing up and gave a report on her area of responsibility. She didn't take a seat at the table like Jill Biden. I mean, it's, it's just absurd. It's, I mean, it's also stating the obvious here. Joe looks different. I mean, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if some of the cosmetics that have been done in the past are now ceased, that he's not running for president anymore, but we can see it in the video. I mean, we can all see it with our own eyes. Joe looks different. All right, Mark Thiessen, thanks for deeper analysis yeah. than what I just offered, the obvious superficial observation. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.